Hello? <laughs> Can you hear me? Wait, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. We got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know where Mr. DeBerry is. I was just talking to him in another room. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, let me see. What's this? Hang on just a second. I think he's texting me. <laughs> Sam and Ada, right? Yep. Ada. Ada. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello, Noah. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Noah, what are you doing for your passion project? Um, how does the video game industry function? Hmm. Like you're looking at the business of it more or yeah. how to design? Okay. Interesting. That's cool. Do you um do you want to do that someday? Work in video? Yeah, game? actually pretty soon because I already know wow. coding stuff. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Hello, Mr. DeBerry. <laughs> Hi, Mr. <laughs> I think you're muted. Hey, good morning, guys. Miss Elson, I'm so sorry for that last session. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm no, my I, was looking at the, I was looking at the time and I'm thinking about our normal schedule. Anyways, all right. I know, so, schedules too. You'll have um you'll have plenty of you'll have plenty of time with this group. Okay. <laughs> um let me see who all is here. View wise, yeah, we're up to about six, uh, four people right now. So let's, since we don't start till ten fifteen, we have a couple of minutes. Yeah, they were <laughs> telling me what they're doing their projects on, and we were talking about how it's funny that kids all get these little glimpses into the teachers' houses now. This must be weird. <laughs> <laughs> or or space if you're Zachary. <laughs> hey Zach, how are you? All right, when you guys come into the room, you're muted. So you, if you if we talk to you directly, you'll have to unmute yourselves. Mm -hmm. Ada, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good. So Ms. Olsen said that you guys were sharing your topics uh, with her. Did you guys get through everybody being able to share? Not Zachary or Audrey yet. I think you're still muted, Zachary. Zach, you just have to push your screen. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm okay. good now. Yeah. What are you what are you doing your passion project on Zachary? Tennis. Oh. Like the what exactly with tennis? Like the um like like how to improve and get better and then like how the best tennis players got to where they are. Like training and all that kind of stuff or cool. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Audrey? Sustainable architecture. Sustainable architecture. Mm. Cool. Very interesting. I stayed at a hotel last weekend that where they um, they had this big chart that talks about their water usage and electricity usage. It's like um, all of like it's like I think it's a lead. You know, have you learned about that yet? The lead certification, L E E D. Yeah, it's a, it's like one of it's a brand new one at, at Oberlin. That's like very. Um, very uh, um, cutting edge with that kind of stuff, I guess. And hello, Jacob. <laughs> How are we doing with time? So I guess, should we give another minute or should we get started? Yeah, let's give them just another minute to pop in. While, them, while people are still popping in, let me 
just go over some things with you guys so you know. Um, hey, Dick. So I extended the due date for when your project is due. So your final project is now due April 17th. So it was due Monday the 13th, and I'm changing that to April 17th. The reason, hi Blair, the reason why I'm changing that is because um, we have spring break, and so I wasn't sure, um, I didn't wanna have it due that Monday after spring break is over, okay? And even though spring break is gonna be super weird this year, and um, you know, like I was teasing the other group, you might be spending it in your living room or your dining room, <laughs> some different room of the house. Um, I didn't know if you'd wanna be working on this project all during spring break. You probably will a little bit for sure, okay? Um, the other thing is on the, on the Popham Six English webpage on the calendar, um, you'll see on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, Mr. Saya, Dr. Brown, Ms. Sinsel and I are all hosting Zooms and you attend those Zooms by section, right? So all section ones are at the same time, then section two, then section three, then section four. So all of those are up for Tuesday and Thursday for the next few weeks. Um, however, it's likely that I'll also have some English Zooms on Monday and Wednesday and maybe Friday, okay? The Zoom tomorrow is optional. It's an open forum for questions and answers if you need anything from 8.30 to 9.15. Um, let's see, the other things to know about so Mrs. Elson is going to go over the resources that are available to you online. You can access um, the library page in a couple of different ways, right? One way to do that is from the Popham 6 website. And all you have to do, um, there are two different links. One, you'll see on the website, it has the Scarsdale Middle School Library kind of banner. And behind it, there's like a, a mural. If you click on that, that takes you right to the library homepage. Um, if you click on the databases, guess where it takes you? It takes you to the databases. Um, but then Ms. Elson is going to show you um, some other ways you can access that too. Um, you guys identified resources in your proposals. Those resources um, obviously are ones that you are likely to use, but you can also add to them or you can replace some of them. Right? So if you're learning about new resources today or you discover new resources along the way, add those. Right? That's not a big deal. Um, and then finally, as far as keeping track of your resources, it can be just a simple list. I'm not going to ask you to do a formal bibliography. If you know some tools like Noodle Tools um, and you want to use those to create your Works Cited page, that's fine. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a simple list for this. Um, for this project, okay? Because I feel like it's a little easier to teach that to you um, in person. And then finally, be on the lookout uh, later this afternoon for um, a couple of lessons um, up on the website having to do with note-taking strategies and nonfiction reading skills, okay? Um, so those will be up there for you using Explain Everything, um, as long as everything goes smoothly on my end. All right, so Mrs. Elson's gonna host our meeting today. I'm gonna turn it over to her. Um, we're gonna spend about 30 minutes um, with going over those resources and then also giving you some time to ask questions. Make sure that when you have a question, just use your, use your hand raising tool through Zoom. All right, everybody good? All right, excellent. All right, Mrs. Elson. All right, guys. So um, as Mr. DeBerry said, I'm gonna show you some of our databases that I think will be helpful for this project. It's a little uh, tricky because there are so many directions you can go with with this project, which is part of what makes it so awesome. Um, but so I'm going to focus on things that are a little broader. But if you're finding you're not finding information that you need, um, you can feel free to reach out to me either through Schoology or through email. And I'm happy to help you. Uh, more one-on-one uh, -on -one also and help you find the right direction. But, but we have so many um, databases and resources, digital resources, you should be able to find something good. So I'm gonna be mostly sharing my screen, but I'll stop every few minutes and see if there are questions too. And um, so I'm just not yammering away too much too. So let me show you 
I know that you can get to our databases uh, from Mr. DeBerry's website, but I also wanted to um, show you how to get to them from the school website because uh, that's often how people go. So there's a few ways. You can either go under departments and scroll down to library and just click there, or um, I was, or go to, actually, let me go back to home again first. I must have clicked on something by mistake. Go to site shortcuts, and there's also a link there to library. And that'll bring up the library website. And from the library website, you can get, one thing I should tell you though, um, uh, just in general, when you're getting to the library website, go through the school site rather than going, um, don't just search Scarsdale Middle School Library on Google, because that will take you to our old version of our website. We're trying to change that, but that's where it brings you right now. So go through the school site. And then once you're there, you can get to databases either through the top, through this bar here, or right here this little icon and once you click on that it's gonna open up to uh, this chart if you went to Quaker Ridge this may look familiar because mr. Calvert helped me set this up this summer and that's how they did it there and we have 38 different databases that are available to you um, just as a quick reminder one of the main differences between um, these databases and a website is that these are subscription databases so either the taxpayers of Scarsdale or the state of New York have paid for you to have access to these. And they do that for a couple reasons. One, um, they obviously they think these are good, valuable resources that they're worth spending money on. And that's because they have been um, cleared for you. They're vetted. You don't have to worry. You know, there's a lot of great resources on the internet, but there's a lot of junk too. And these have been cleared for you. They're reliable resources. They're on the topics that you study in middle school. And they're written for middle school age students. So they're good. They're a great starting point for any project you do. Um, so you can just uh, scroll through these to see what's available. Or you can also look under subject and look and click on these to get to, for example, social studies. Uh, these are all ones that have social studies. They may also be general databases, but um, they will have some social studies topics within those. You'll see under each one, there's like the logo, there's a brief description of the database, and then there's a link where it says, click here for the password guide. So this is a way you can always get to these. If you were accessing these, if we were at school doing this, you would just click on the database and it would bring you right there. They recognize the school network is logging in and they know that we're a subscriber. However, if you're looking for home, they, from home, they need to verify that you have a paid subscription, okay? That you're not just anyone. Um, that's how they stay in business. So this is a list of all that you, so you'll need a username and password to log on from home. And this is how you get to that information. They're all listed here in alphabetical order. Uh, the first column is the username, the second is the password. Some of these allow you to log in through Google. So you would just look for that link on the database and uh, you'd click on that and put in your school Gmail um, account information and then it would bring you right there. Cause they know if you have an email address that ends in scarsdaleschools.org that you are a paid subscriber, okay? So that is how you get to that information. If there are any questions so far, any questions? How to access, how to get the usernames and passwords. Have any of you guys used these username and passwords before? If you have, you can just raise your hand like that or, okay, a couple of people have, okay, good. So let me go back to my screen and I'm just gonna show you um, a couple of these. So I'm just gonna go backwards if I can. So um, I'm gonna start with showing you, I went backward too much, um, Science Flix for a couple reasons. Uh, one is that even though it's called Science Flix, it's a broad category. There are a lot of different science resources within that. 
It could be nutrition um, and exercise, or it could be uh, engineering, or it could be biology. There's a lot of different, actually somebody mentioned that they were doing archeology. span There's an archeology span category here too. So it, there are tons of different topics here. I also think it's kind of nicely laid out and easy to navigate. Um, and I'm gonna show you an example under force in motion because it is uh, talking a little bit about roller coasters. And I know that was one of the examples we had, like what was the physics of how, like how does a roller coaster work exactly? Um, another thing that Science Flix has, which I think is nice for this project is videos. I know you guys need to use a video. So they have very short videos here, but this is one option. You can just click on it. It'll bring you straight there. And um, on the side, you'll see for any topic you have, it'll say watch it, and that'll bring you to videos, or they have read it, which will bring you to articles. Um, they also have like a dive deeper, which will look at related topics. These are all links within, um, within ScienceFlix, so you can check these out if you want to focus on some aspect of the physics a little bit more here. Uh, and then they have same kind of with explore more. And then they also have this nice uh, link here to related websites. So just as we said, if you're looking on Google for sources, you know, like one of the things that's great about Google is you get so many hits, but that's also the drawback with Google. You get so many results. It's hard to sort through sometimes. So this will bring you to websites that they've said are good, reliable websites. Like this is bringing you to PBS, which is good. This is a, a gov site here. This is NASA. These are all great places for you to start doing your research. Um, so that is Science Flicks. And I also want to show you um, some of the more general sources, like here's Britannica. We have a few different Britannica resources. First, I'm going to show you this one, which is um, sort of the general school one. And they have different levels. So if we click on middle, it'll bring you to the middle school level. And I'm going to look up in the search bar again, roller coaster. And here is uh, an article on roller coasters, okay? And you'll see a few things. Again, they have some videos here too, so that can be nice and helpful. And they have a table of contents here on the side, so you could scroll through and get to all of these, but if you wanted to go quickly to like technological innovations, click on that, it'll bring you straight there. you see there's a video here too, okay? And um, this will bring you back to the table of contents. Um, they also have images and videos in this tab up here that you could check out. Um, and either through the tab or through down here, they have uh, related resources. So again, this is within Britannica, but these are things that could be useful like amusement park. And then they also have, um, I'll go back to article again, web's best sites, sort of like they had on ScienceFlix. They have vetted for you. They've cleared, they looked online, said this is a really great resource that students should know about. It's not their resource, but they are vouching for it. So you can check this out too. And this is a roller coaster museum. That who, who knew there was a roller coaster museum? So you can check those out on Britannica. Um, I'm also going to show you Britannica Image Quest, and then I'll stop to see if there are any questions. Um, I think most students understand or okay Ada you had a question let me see if I can I'll stop sharing for a second Ada I think you have to unmute yourself so um how will we record our new resources if we want to use them for a project I, sorry could you say the beginning of that again I missed that how will we record new resources if we want to use them for our project if you okay, so you, uh, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Um, you don't need to do a formal work cited uh, page for this. I mean, you can if you want to, but like, let's say you were using an article from Britannica. I guess you would you could just say Britannica Middle School. The title of the article and the link is probably. Does that sound all right, Mr. DeBerry? Yep, that's perfect. Should we perfect. do it in like a Google Doc? Yeah, yeah. Google Doc would be fine. Okay. 
yeah. I would just set up something you guys might consider doing is setting up a folder in your drive called passion project. And then that way, as you're finding, um, you know, you can put a doc in there where you have links to different resources. You can keep a list of your resources. Um, if you're taking notes digitally, that would be a place to do that. So you just organizationally, you might want to set up a folder in your drive for the passion project. Well, actually, um, I would set up in your English folder, right? Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. Uh, so let me show you another Britannica one. So this is a great resource to use for um, a lot of different projects. I think most students understand that you can't use um, somebody else's words and not give them credit. And the same thing with images, you really need to credit images. And if you were to use an image, like let's say I like this little frog, he's very cute. I put him, I create a website and I put it online and I use that frog without that any, the permission of the person who took that photograph, you can get in trouble for doing that, okay? It's basically taking their property and passing it off as your own. So what is nice about this resource is that you are allowed to use these. Whoever took these photographs, they've said either Britannica pay for them or something, or they said, yeah, these are open and you're fine. It's, I'm totally happy to have you use them. So you don't have to worry about that, which is really nice. And there are also a gazillion photos in here. So you're not limiting yourself either because there really are so many. So if I, again, sticking with roller coaster, I, there are 147 of image, images of roller coasters I can use here without having to worry about that. So I could use this one if I want. And then once I click on that, I can just download it right to my computer if I want. I can just print it, um, add to my images. That's like if you create like kind of your own little account on ImageQuest, then you can create folders of images. Um, there are also, let me just close this for a second if I can. I think I gotta um, move this so I can close it. Um, there are historical photos here too. So you have a range of photos, which is really nice. And um, you don't have to cite specifically for this project. You don't need to do a formal works cited page that is. But if down the road you do need to do them, one of the things that's really nice about this is they give you a citation. So I could just copy and paste this into Noodle Tools if you're using this down the road, okay? Um, otherwise, citing photographs, are, it's a little, takes a little bit more work, but they give you the citation, which is really nice. Um, all right, so that is Britannica Image Quest. So those are, those are both great resources for you to use. Um, again, World Book is another general one that you can check out too, that a lot of your topics will be in there. Um, I did wanna show you one other, um, let me see if, let's see, I'm going to just look at video because we have this new resource called Classroom Video On Demand. This is something we got last year and it allows you to stream videos to, through your computer and some of them are like full length documentaries and some are just little segments. Um, but I know you guys do need videos for this project so I thought this would be a good source to show you. So if I look up roller coaster here, it comes up with 282 results. Um, you'll see in the little corner, it'll show you whether it's a, how long the video is. So some of these are little segments and it tells you after the title too, if it's a segment. This one, however, it says full video. So I'm just gonna look at that one first. I'll open that up. And you can just play it directly from your computer which is nice. Uh, they have sort of like a table of contents of different segments within. So if you wanted to jump forward to, let's say you're interested in the coaster design, you can click on that. It'll bring you to that section. Now we know why we ride these machines and why they scare us. The next step is creating a modern day coaster. Okay, so that you can see how that's going into the next topic there, okay? They have some, some information about it here, who created this, the date um, that was, I guess it was added to, when it says date added, they're talking about when it was added to this database, but the date it was made was 2003, okay? Um, 
I also wanted to show you how you can uh, limit your results on this too. So we had 282. Um, if you wanted to focus, like let's say you're not, you're focusing more on the science behind roller coasters, not so much the, the history or you're focusing on engineering. You can click on engineering and technology and then select apply and that'll limit um, it to the roller coaster results that are in that broad category. Uh, you can also filter it uh, different ways. One way that might be nice is by copyright date. So let's say you want to see things within the past 15 years. Click on that and done. And then you're getting more recent ones. Um, one thing, if you want to get away from this, you'll have to then clear the filters if you've narrowed it down too much. And here you'd say cancel too. So then we're back to the full results. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I want to show you with that. You can preview them a little bit here too uh, before you download it or well, you won't be downloading it anyway, but there's a little preview feature here too. Um, in, let me go back and see if there are any questions and then I'll go over some eBooks. Any, any questions about either Britannica Image Quest or the videos? uh what does a cup of coffee do in the controls <laughs> i don't know <laughs> there was a, a question in the chat um i haven't seen the cup of coffee all right let me show you how to um so we and unfortunately we don't have access to our physical books in the library but we do have access to a lot of ebooks some of those you're probably familiar with and some you may not be so I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty familiar with Sora. And, but if you look at eBooks on the top bar of the uh, library website, you'll see Sora is here. And we also have two other collections of eBooks. Sora is mostly fiction. There are some nonfiction books on there too though. So you could search in Sora, um, or if you go to Gale, let's see is coming up yeah so these are some other ebooks we have and you can search these by category here so if you are let's see what do we have for literature somebody did say can't remember if it was this section or another they were doing something on mythology but they can get to that from here one way these are different from the sora books well a couple ways you'll see it doesn't look quite as as user friendly um it's not as you have to kind of play around with it a little bit more but it also um all of you could be looking at this at the same time. Sora for most books is one person checks it out at a time. Here you could all be looking at it. So you can look at this. I could click on view ebook here and I believe that's gonna make it look more like a book book. Yeah, these are basically scans of books that exist already. Um, so you could scroll through it that way, but I could, you're gonna probably wanna go to the table of contents. So let's see, I'll look up Aeneas. And then I'm getting some information here about him. And you can look at it different ways too. Um, usually you can look at it, like if you look at these controls up here, you'll get like one page at a time. Uh, you can zoom in or out. If you wanna see two pages, you can look like that, uh, that and so on, okay? So these are all available to you too, um, as well as there's another collection, ABC Clio. Those are mostly so social studies books. Um, for any of these, though, you can search through the catalog to get to them, too. I'm going to just show you one that I know we happen to have an ebook of also, uh, this genetic disorders. So this is a Gale one uh, that's in that library I just showed you, but you could also get to it this way. So if you don't want to go into each of those separate ebook libraries, you can look in the catalog and you should be able to get to them straight from here. So this will, if you click on open, it'll bring you there. And you'll see the way you know it's an ebook is there's a little E here underneath um, the title and it does say open too, okay? Um, so you can search the catalog and get things that way. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. Questions about ebooks or anything else I've talked about? I know. Kevin, I, oh, sorry. That's I'd say okay. guys, make sure that you're 
thinking kind of ahead because we had Mrs. Elson with us today and you guys have an opportunity to really kind of brainstorm with her. So make sure that you're using your time thoughtfully. Um, you know, because I know, you know, like Jake thinking about baking bread and yeast and all of that, you might have some questions about resources there. Um, Jasper kind of thinking about yours with um, with money and coins, like might have some things that you want to um to think through. Okay, so make sure you use your time wisely. Any questions? All right. All right. <laughs> if you change your mind and you have a question later, oh, Ada has a question. Um, how do we get to the books again? The book resources? The ebooks? Yeah. Um, let me show you again. So I'll go back to sharing my screen. There is on the website, uh, let me go to the homepage of the website. I have those weird lines popping up on my computer. Um, up here is one way. There in the, on the bar at the top on the far right, there's also right here. And that'll bring you to the three different collections. Or you can also see them from going through the catalog. You'll just have to be able to tell which is which by the little logo underneath and if it says open. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else have a question? Did anybody find it, have some ideas for places they might look or anybody still feeling stumped? Or Sam, or Sam. Um, my question is, what do you think is the most reliable one of all of them? Oh, they're all reliable. That's why we buy them, you know, because they're good, reliable resources. And if you can check the, the ones that they link you to also, I think you can trust those too. Anybody else? Um, oh, yeah, Audrey? Um, what are noodle tools? Noodle tools is, um, did you ever use EasyBid? Uh, it's basically what we call a citation manager. You don't need to use it for this project, but if you want to, or if some people use it in elementary school for their capstone project, it's just a tool to help you create a works cited list, really. That's how people mostly use it. And it is a good way to keep up with your resources. So if you want to, um, if you want to give it a go, you're welcome to do that. Right. And, um, and you have that, you have access. So, um, and if you're somebody, to, sorry, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, if you do want to play around with that, um, on my Schoology page under resources, there's a folder called noodle tools and there are some, uh, sources there, some handouts and things that could help you with it. If you wanted to play around with that, if you had some time and are feeling ambitious, it's an option. Sam, do you have another question or is that your hand up from earlier? That's, that's my hand up from earlier. Okay. Anybody else have a question? You guys, you, you guys are you are feeling doing like you have some places to start looking or to continue your research? Okay. Okay. If you do have questions on the road, feel free to email me or message me on Schoology. Are we and supposed to start our projects like now? Like, are we supposed to start researching now? So I would say start researching. Um, you could certainly start today okay. or you could start tomorrow. Tomorrow Zoom, tomorrow's Thursday. Um, tomorrow Zoom, I'm going to go over note taking strategies and also some nonfiction reading skills. Um, there should be lessons up about that tonight too. Um, so if you're at a point where you're ready, you can do that. But you need to, if you're going to start researching today, and taking notes, you need to think about what note taking strategies you're going to use. Um, okay. Or it may be today you're just exploring resources and gathering resources. That's what I would do if it were me, is after we finish this meeting, I would go back through some of those things that Mrs. Elson just shared with me and kind of see like what, what would make sense for me to, um, to bookmark or to download or to go back to. Um, I would spend time doing that. Okay. And then wait till um, tomorrow after we talk about note-taking strategies and reading skills and then start the research part of it. Okay. Okay. Um, so 
just as some reminders, tomorrow from 8.30 to 9.15, it's an open Q&A for all sections. It's optional, so if you have things you wanna jump in, I mean, on Friday, I keep thinking today's Thursday. Um, on Friday, that's what's happening. Thursday um, is note-taking strategies, nonfiction reading skills. Um, then if you look on the Google Calendar, there are um, dates and times for upcoming Zoom meetings, um, at least on Tuesday and Thursday of next week for all of your content areas, right? Science, social studies, um, math, and English. So make sure you pay attention to that. Um, and then finally, on Schoology later today, I'm going to put up um, just some kind of benchmark dates. And what I mean by that is some suggestions on, okay, by this date, you should have finished your research. By this date, you should have started your project. Um, that doesn't mean that you have to have those things done by those dates, okay? But it should be just a, a guide to help you out so that you are completely finished by April 17th. Um, you have two blog posts that are due this week, right? Um, blog post number one and blog post number two are due um, by Friday at 10 p.m. And those are for a grade. Okay, are there any questions about that? Mr. DeBerry? Yes. Um, what time on Thursday will the Zoom meeting be? Um, tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. So tomorrow it's the same, it's the, the same times that we've been meeting. So if you're section four, um, to be honest with you, Sam, I'd have to look on the calendar. Hang on. Um, while I'm doing that, does somebody else have another question? Let's see. Tomorrow is 10 a.m. for section four. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, so if you guys are good, we're gonna go ahead and end the meeting. What do you guys tell Mrs. Elson? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right, so I will, see, yeah. I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, do me a favor if you're on a group, text um help remind people that these are happening and should to check um to check the calendars for dates too okay My bye all right mrs elson thank you very much all we right, appreciate your help my pleasure all right thanks bye bye bye